A crowd of 300 people filled the Ag Hall. The air was heavy with electric energy, like a Nuremberg rally. Bernard Simpkin was 51 and wearing a nondescript suit and a girdle cinched his fat gut. He parted his hair on the side and combed it back over his ears like a haircut from a bygone era. Behind the lectern, peering at the crowd in his imperious manner, smiling until the applause died down. Eli Levitt's grey eyes were wild with expectation in contrast to his expressionless and doughy middle-aged face. He turned to his fifteen-year-old son, Ethan, and whispered. He was a principal in a private Christian school in the U.S. for the last five years, but returned to Canada and became the leader of the Christian Canada Party. I think he's going to be the next Prime Minister. I've seen his videos. He's going to be amazing. Just watch. As normal, Eli's lips barely moved when he spoke, as if he was a ventriloquist. Bernard spoke in a stentorian voice. First of all, I would like to thank our hosts, the Freeman Association of Canada, for inviting me to Langley today. I would also like to thank all of you for attending. His arms were on his hips with his chest puffed out. In eight months, we will face a historic election. Never in our great country have we faced such a crisis. We have been on the decline for 100 years because of the liberals and socialists that sold out Canada. He enunciated his points with his hands, with index and thumb forming a circle, as if to make the OK sign. Once, our God-fearing country was the envy of the world. First, we had furs, we had grains, then we had manufacturing. The activists stopped the fur trade because they love animals more than they love Canadians. Immigrants destroyed the prairie farmland. The manufacturing jobs have all gone because they gave them all to the foreigner. He paused for the applause to die down and stood with fleshy lips jutting in a frown. Immigration. They opened the doors to refugees and people from all over the world, so Canadians were the minority. A Canadian cannot get a job because the guy hiring has some foreign name. A droplet of white spittle formed on his lip, which turned into a string when he opened his mouth. He placed his hands back on his hips. Isn't that the truth? Said Eli. The country is so weakened and divided, we can't accomplish anything. We can't even get a pipeline built since the Supreme Court gave every protest group veto power. I say, to hell with them. To hell with the provinces. To hell with the protesters. And to hell with the Supreme Court. No longer will we meekly let them run roughshod all over us because we obey the rules, and they don't. If we are going to win, we need to do the same without holding back. If we are more ruthless than they are, then I promise you, we will win. White Spittle sprayed toward the crowd and his face contorted with rage as he pointed a finger to the sky. The applause drowned out his speech for a long moment, as he grinned with self-satisfaction. Let us pause and review how we got into this mess. His tone came back down so he could build to another crescendo. Before 2024, the liberals and conservatives gave away our jobs by opening our borders to imports of cheap goods from the world. They also opened the borders to immigration, so the jobs had gone to immigrants instead of Canadians. The stock market was booming until the foreign money lenders forced the United States to go bankrupt, so the conservatives slowed immigration and put up tariffs and balanced the budget, but we never recovered. The damage was too deep. Now, a new socialist government has taken over and says they will undo all the progress that was made, sign trade agreements and allow immigrants back in, raise taxes and increase the government. The leader, John Clayton. His mother is not even white. She is not. Ladies and gentlemen, nothing could be worse. What we have, brothers and sisters, is God's punishment for turning our back. The socialists, the atheists. The Muslims have taken charge and turned us away from God's law and turned Canada into a modern Sodom and Gomorrah. The feminists, transgenders and conservatives shame the Christian way of life and turn it on its ear. They talk about equal rights but have taken away the rights of good Christians and given them to the Sodomites. The husband stands in the place of God and the woman's place is by his side. In the name of women's liberation. They have seduced mothers away from their babies with promises of money and temptation, when God placed them in the home for His glory. Liberate them from what? From God's holy law? They have given us birth control and abortion. Don't get me going on abortion. 
there is no greater evil in this land. It is a conspiracy by the foreigners to exterminate us. We can't even bring up our children according to his law. Spare the rod and spoil the child. If a good Christian man even tried that, it could wind up being charged with child abuse. It's no wonder there are criminals today. Kids these days have no respect. It is an absolute, all-around failure of secular government. If we are to fix this country, we need to abandon the law of man and return to the law of God. What I am suggesting is a revolution, a revolution that would put Canada first. God will rain his holy fire upon the apostasy and deliver the land to the righteous. God's blessings and our determination will bring our country back to its former glory. I give you my sacred pledge, I will make Canada a shining example to the rest of the Christian world. This country of explorers, pioneers, and entrepreneurs, it is time to take what is yours. We will reveal the strength of our character to our friends and our enemies. We will gain power, and we will keep it, and we will make Canada great again. Two weeks from today, the Christian Canada Party and I will win the election. Rise up. Feel the Holy Spirit, your shout to the heavens will be a rallying call to your friends and a warning to the heathen. It is the shout of Canada that goes beyond the mountains, over the prairies, into the world. It is the shout of justice and victory. Eli's eyes were stuck in the same wild stare, and he turned to his son and said, Wow, I think he's going to get it. The speech inflamed him. He rose to his feet, forgot about the blisters on his hands and applauded. The crowd rose, and in a frenzy chanted, Bernard! 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 The ecstasy caught every man, woman, and child in the hysteria, and the blinding hope that they could force their version of utopia upon their country. Eventually, the applause petered out like an extended orgasm, and Bernard left the podium. The crowd started dispersing and passed the expressionless gaze of the suited security guards on the way through the exits. Ellie felt he was part of a historic moment ushering in a new age. It would be like the apocalypse that would prepare the land for the second coming. If not the literal second coming, it would be the next best thing to have God's law take its supremacy over man's. It was the night of the election. Eli voted before he and Ethan gathered with the other party faithful at the Walnut Grove Community Hall to watch the results. His wife and daughters stayed at home since he believed it was not a woman's place to be involved in politics. A few hundred were milling around to cheer on the local Christian Canada candidate. Eli turned to his son. For the second coming to arrive, the land must be cleansed. The scripture said that the earth will be cleansed with fire, and we will suffer many tribulations until he arrives again. Many of us believe we can avoid this by recreating a common order, where we can live under God's law. Do you understand that, son? Ethan nodded, but there was still fervent worry written across his features. But father, what if we lose the election and God's law is not restored? Would we not burn along with the sinners? Many will be spared according to their merit, but there will be tribulations across the land. It is a necessary step to usher in the second coming. Think about it, Ethan. We may live to see the reign of Christ himself. The faithful will be ordained as his ministers, and the government will be run by God. For every ear shall hear it, and every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is the Christ. He will cleanse the earth. All things that are corrupt will be burned, and the earth will be cleansed by fire. Ethan gestured at the screens. Look, Father, the results from the first polling stations are coming up. They both listened to the analyst on McPherson News. This just in. The polling stations in the Maritimes are now reporting. Newfoundland and Labrador are showing the first results. The Liberals are in first, followed by the Greens, New Progressives, and Christian Canada Party. The Workers' Party, and Secular Jerusalem, both near the back of the pack. Eli sniffed, holding his nose up and making a brief posture that resembled both arrogance and disgust. That's the best that we can expect from the Maritimes but it's a good sign that the Christians are in second place. Our supporters are concentrated in Saskatchewan, Alberta, and BC, so we get the most seats for our votes, but we have some support in Ontario. He adjusted his stiff, upturned collar and turned to Ethan. It will not look good across Quebec either. The Papists will vote for the Liberté Party like Lemmings. If we're not too far behind after Ontario, the Prairies and BC should push us over the top. If our support was spread evenly across every riding in the country, we wouldn't win any seats at all. His son, however, 
had noticed something. But Father, it says Christian Canada only got 10% of the vote. How is that possible? Eli raised his wild eyebrows and kept them there. Good question, son. Christian Canada is the only right-wing party, so conservatives vote for us. The rest of the parties are slightly to the right of center, center, left, or far left, so they split their votes between the different parties. The result is that Christian Canada can win the most seats in Parliament with only 25% of the total vote. Ethan gazed blankly at the screen, trying to understand what his father had told him. It didn't seem possible to win an election with only 25% of the vote, but he trusted his father. He learned from an early age to keep doubts he had to himself, or face the consequences. His father demanded obedience as well as faith. He was brought up in apostolic Christian schools and had been attending seminary daily, like the other kids his age. The first Sunday of every month, the church expected him to stand up and cry and testify he knew their church was true, beyond a shadow of a doubt. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, he repeated to himself with some irony. He saw shadows everywhere but would not admit there was a doubt among them. Eyes turned to the screen, and the room pulsed with expectation. Alberta polls are closed and the results are pouring in. Christian Canada is picking up momentum from Manitoba and is ahead in 70% of the ridings. A cheer rose from the crowd, and Eli and Ethan joined in. It's going to be close. Eli slapped his hand on his thigh. The landslide in Saskatchewan and Alberta was breathtaking, but not surprising. The Christians won every seat except Edmonton Strathcona. The buzz in the room quickened, and brave talk of a majority government circulated. The idea was electric. With a majority government, they would be unstoppable. They could wipe away the godless iniquity and create a new order. They could rule with an iron fist, and little could stand in their way. There were few barriers to theocracy in Canada since much of the political system was based on tradition rather than checks and balances. When those traditions had done nothing but encourage sin, there was no need to respect them. The buzz in the room quickened, and brave talk of a majority government circulated. The idea was electric. With a majority government, they would be unstoppable. They could wipe away the godless iniquity and create a new order. They could rule with an iron fist, and little could stand in their way. There were few barriers to theocracy in Canada since much of the political system was based on tradition rather than checks and balances. When Christian Canada believed those traditions had done nothing but encourage sin, there was no need to respect them. There was a fire in Eli's eyes that Ethan saw as disquieting. It's all up to BC now. The white spit made him look like he was frothing at the mouth. This will be the first election in recent memory where BC decides the winner. Most polls are reporting and the results are showing an uptick for the Liberals and lower results for the Christians. It still looks like the Christians will come out ahead, but will it be a majority or minority government? Eli sat heavy in his chair and exhaled deeply. A minority government would not allow the revolutionary changes they wanted. To pass any legislation, they would need to water down their agenda enough to get the votes of at least one opposition party. He also knew minority governments didn't last very long. The fall of the government would force a new election, which wouldn't be bad if the government needed a mandate for their radical agenda, but that would be risky. Before Bernard Simpkin created the Christian Canada Party, Eli had no interest in the political system. He thought the left rigged it against him and others with a fundamentalist point of view, and believed the way to change the country would be through direct action. God would move him and others in the militant arm of the apostles to bring about the apocalypse that would usher in his holy thousand-year reign. Ethan noticed his father's concerned eyes as they updated the BC poll numbers on the bottom of the screen. What does it mean? It means it's going to be close. Although several stations have not finished counting, McPherson News declared the Christian Canada Party to be the winner of the election. It will be a minority government, so it remains to be seen if they will try to arrange a formal coalition, or look for support from one of the other parties on a vote-by-vote -vote basis. It's difficult to see how that's going to happen because of the wide chasm between the far-right Christian Canada Party and the centre and centre-left opposition. Now to Jim Singh, on the floor of Bernard Simpkins' press briefing in Ottawa. Eli's eyes lit up with pride and a terrible, terrible joy that brought something to his lips, resembling his idea of what a smile might look like. 
He turned to his son but stared past him as if he were looking at someone standing behind. We got farther than we ever thought we would. If he can't get the support of one of the opposition parties, he might get the support of the police and military, so he doesn't have to. Bernard Simpkin is going to be the Prime Minister. Next morning, Ethan awoke to a crashing sound coming from the living room. Damn them. Damn them to hell. He heard his father shout over the sound of breaking glass. Ethan, still dressed in his mandatory trapdoor, one-piece white underwear, peered around the corner to see what could be making his father so furious. Those damn heathens stole the election. Ethan ducked behind the corner as a potted plant hurtled in his direction. Semi-trailers blocked the intersections, and the acrid smell of burning tires still lingered in the air. No one cleared the burned-out police cars from the front of Parliament Hill. A scrawny mongrel sniffed at one, then gnawed off a mouthful of a partly cooked calf muscle from the officer who died behind the wheel. A solitary soldier lay lifeless, with a bullet through his breast, at the Canadian National War Memorial. A motley array of armed men stood guard at the front gate while tin pot generals barked orders. The splintered remains of a heavy wooden door still dangled from the hinges of the Parliament building. Some putchists wore police or military uniforms, but most wore baseball caps and the jeans and plaid shirts commonly worn by the far right of Canadian politics. More were on the roof of Parliament and the East Bloc, with their rifle scopes scanning the horizon. Park trucks blocked the bridges in Ottawa and armed men barricaded the highways. Heavy gunfire lasted through the night, then became more sporadic and finally stopped when the last loyal Canadian fell silent. Bernard Simpkin approached a makeshift podium in front of a dozen supporters and media. Grim-faced, he waited for the cheers and applause to die down. Two months ago, Canadians elected Christian Canada Party and I to be the next government. We had four more seats than our nearest rival, the Liberals. The people had spoken. The new government chosen. For the first time in recent history, a government willing to stand up for your rights was ready to take control. But no. The Liberals, Greens, and new progressives formed an illegal and un-Canadian coalition. Like witches in a coven, they schemed with the Governor-General to overthrow the rightful government with one of their own. Yesterday was to be the first sitting of Parliament of the illegal coalition. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, we would never take this line down. We have the will and determination to overcome the foe and take charge of our own destiny. Many of the traitors are now in our custody and Ottawa is back in God's hands, in the hands of the righteous. Good people from across the country and from our neighbors to the south have come to our aid and our militia controls the airport, television stations, police station, and government buildings. We have armed blockades on every bridge and road leading into Ottawa. Old stock Canadians have nothing to fear, but we have temporarily instituted a curfew from 10 p.m. to 6 p.m. Government workers, including police, will report to work tomorrow and we will screen them for loyalty and suitability. We accomplished a great deal in spite of the traitors, but this is only the beginning. For this to work, we need the help of freedom-loving people from coast to coast. This is your call to arms. Take your weapons and ammunition and report to your local Christian Canada office. Seize border crossings to let more of our American allies in to help us. Although we will webcast nationally, we have temporarily shut down the Internet in Ottawa until we have completely rounded up opposition forces. Since we have control of the television and radio stations, we will provide updates regularly. Remember, we are in this together. Good night and God bless. Eli finished his evening meal as he watched the Christian Canada webcast on his wall screen. I'm done with my plate, dear. He told his wife, Miracle. She looked ten years younger than Eli, but had a stern expression of someone used to a hard life. She wore the required pastel-colored prairie dress and her long dark hair was combed up in a large bun on the top of her head. The swelling around her eye had gone down, but she was going to have quite a shiner. He would ask her to put the flesh-colored makeup when she left the house to avoid busybodies. It was the only makeup allowed in the house. He knew he needed to pick his battles, and didn't have time to fight those who questioned the authority of the patriarch of the family. He had bigger things to worry about now. Miracle took their plates and put them all in the sink for washing. Well son, it looks like it's not over yet. I would be happy to drive down to Vancouver and take up the fight, but I'm in a much more important battle already and don't want to draw attention to myself. 
I don't want you to either, in case it interferes with our greater duty. What we're doing now will contribute much more than marching around with a rifle. Ethan already knew not to ask what his father's important work might be and looked up, trying to convey perfect, puppy-like loyalty. Sure father. Do you think Ed will win? We will pray to our Heavenly Father to make it so. He will hear our prayers and decide if we are worthy of his rule on earth. Some of our brothers serve in the military and they will help. They both knelt on the floor, bowing their heads with arms folded. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you this day in gratitude to thank you for your many blessings. We thank thee for the food thou hast given us. We thank thee for the moisture that helps the farmers so they might give us sustenance. O thou great leader of nations, we look to thee in this dark and solemn hour. Bless us with a spirit of discernment to root out the terrible evils that have befallen this once great country. I say these things in the name of our Father, and His Son, Jesus Christ, Amen. Yes son, to answer your question, I think this is finally the end to liberal democracy in Canada.